Hello, this is Ket Ng with LSMTAP. I'm here to give you a short presentation on how to incorporate Google Docs into your workflow. Google Docs is basically Microsoft Word created by Google, purely online. It has most of the core functionality you're actually going to use on Microsoft Word, but it's very lightweight, very easy, and very portable. So to start off with, let's create an account. Here, you probably already have one if you have a YouTube account or a Gmail account, but if you don't, you just click on the Create Account button, go to this page, it's basically a one-page form, fill in all the information, hit OK, and it'll have a new address. It'll give you the email address, and that also will work. When you sign up, you do get 15 gigs of storage, which should be enough for most purposes. If for some reason you need more space, because like you're storing lots of video or something, you can buy more. So this is your base level drive. Here, those are the three most common things you can create. Google Docs, Google Slides, Google Sheets. There's other functions that you can create. But you can explore those on your own. Here, at the base level, if you have a new document, you start off by renaming it, whatever you'd like. There we go. And then here, I'm going to drop in some text. Save you watching me type. There we go. Now you can see it's kept pretty much all the formatting, links, a little bit of spacing's off, but it copies paste just fine. Switch over, we have a picture here that's just in a folder on my computer, just drag and drop, and it's right here in the file automatically. You can choose how it interacts with the text here. Um, depending on what you do, those three options, one of them should work. Obviously you can choose the margin but for our purposes this will be just fine. Here on the side you can make comments. How this works is you select any amount of text and then you can type in your comment and then that text will remain highlighted and that comment will be on the side for everyone who views the document to see. So now you notice you can download this thing under a variety of formats, Microsoft Word if you need to interact with other people using Word, um, a couple different text, just like rich text format and stuff. PDF can be very useful, and then as a web page, probably less useful, but maybe there'll be some circumstances we need it. Incident images is very easy, you can just drag and drop it like before. You can have it take pictures from the screen, but also on Google Drive you can store images and you can directly pull them from there. So there's lots of different ways that you can get, I really hate Flash, there's lots of different ways that you can really get your picture into this. Um, tables are handy, you just choose the appropriate uh, size and it'll just drop it in. It's nothing super fancy, but sort of what you need. Going through your standard spelling tools research is pretty cool. You can, uh, it's basically like a Google search, but it makes it easier to uh, reference that Google search in your thing. So here you can drag in pictures if you'd like. So one more way to do that. But if you want to insert a link to something or cite it, it's very easy to do that. Just hit cite and it just drops it in at the bottom with a footnote. So it can be handy if you're doing a lot of citing. You'll also notice there's Google Scholar, which is a very underutilized resource. Um, under preferences, you can have a lot of functions to replace one line of text with something else automatically. The obvious thing is if you're doing symbols, it makes it a good shortcut to do that. Or you can create your own. So here, my example is replace ty with thank you if you're, say, writing a bunch of thank you notes. Once you hit OK, you can go to the file, and it should automatically, on this document and all the other documents, just auto-replace ty, and once you hit space, it'll plug in thank you. Right, you post a dictionary, working with a lot of weird legal terms. you are probably going to run into it uh, highlighting lots of things as being misspelled, so you can to help keep the dictionary up to date. Because of the level of precision required with legal docs, it's maybe not going to be used a ton, but it's you know, there might be some circumstances where you need this. Here, it's created a new file, automatically translated it into Czech. I can't personally verify this, but it looks like it's translated it. Okay, so the best part is the add-ons. So here, I'll show you. It's very easy. You go to add-ons, you can search them up, and then click 
add, and I'll just immediately add it in, no long installation process. And here's easy fax. It's a really handy one. I don't have a fax machine. I try to avoid using them, but if I need one for whatever reason, I need to send in some document. You can go here, fax your current document. You get five free faxes just to try it out, or if you just need a one-time use. And if you want more, you can buy plans. Here's the other really cool thing here is easy bib. So if you want a proper citation of a source, search for code 2.0. Um, here and then you can choose your style of one of very many here. I'll use blue book Just click add bibliography once you have all the bibliographies you want and it'll add it to the end The formatting here is a little wonky. I believe maybe you want to use the other blue book regardless It's a really handy way to just quickly add all your sources and then at the end just hit add and have it all finished so other really cool feature is the revision history. I'm switching over to another document because this document's brand new, so there's not much to look at. But here you can see timestamps and dates for the different versions. Here's where I added the picture. If you go back another one, there's no picture. Um, and then the temp text is highlighted where I added it and some is struck out where I removed it. And you'll notice it says restore this revision at the bottom. And you can just if you find out you made some horrific mistakes, you can just revert to any version previously that you had before. So this is a really cool tool. And also if you just are sharing that with someone else, they can see all your work that you've done if you want to do that. So that's very handy. Another big feature for uh, docs is the sharing. There's basically three levels of sharing. There's the public version where you share a link, which anyone can that has a link can see it. And odds are people without the link won't see it, but you you can't be sure of that, so it's basically for things that you don't mind the public seeing. But it's easy for other people to share because you can give them a link and if they need to have someone else that they think needs to see this document, you can share it with them. And they can share it privately, directly with people, which is just through email. Only the people that you personally invite can see it. And then the last version is published to web, which actually takes this and makes a web page out of it. That is viewable by anybody with a link, and I believe it does get indexed by Google, so it, it'll show up. The nice thing is, it, it's not a static web page. It's pulled from the doc every five minutes. So if you make a change to your document, the changes will populate over the web page fairly quickly. So if you, for example, want to make some sort of announcement which might need to get tweaked a little bit, rather than making a post or like a blog, you might write up some announcement as a Google Docs and just have people plug in information as it comes available. Now here you can see I've shared this document over with Brian, and now he's typing things in, and you can tell because it's got his name. I can work at some other part of the page simultaneously. It's all synced up, um, and this is just a really cool tool. I got the simplest level. For example, you have some meeting notes. Maybe you could have one shared document ever could write in their meeting notes to having larger design documents, for example, where one person could be working in one section, another person could be working in another section, a third person can be like editing a different section. So it's a really, really handy, very powerful tool. This is available in some of the Microsoft products, although there you need to have bought into it. So if you're working with volunteers or the public, or people that might not have the software, this is a really strong feature because it's, Google is available for free, so anyone can collaborate on documents. So here, I'll show you the comments with other people. This is more how it should be used. I can ask, should, should this be bigger? And then someone else can reply. Here, okay, so Brian responds, you know, try 18 point, bold. And then I can respond in return, how about 24 point, plain. And then once we've figured out this conversation, we say, okay, we've resolved this question, this situation, and go over, hit resolve, and the whole thing will disappear. So this is for temporary things that come up and then get dealt with. Something else to notice that's interesting is there's different modes. If I don't want to either personally be messing with the document, it's possible to give other people permission to edit the document, but instead of editing, give them permission to make suggestions. Here, everything you do is highlighted in green, basically. So if you delete something, it just puts the strike through to show that you think maybe you should delete it, but it doesn't actually delete it. In the same way, if you type in text, it's just in green. And then the person in charge of the document, or someone in charge, can either accept a suggestion, in which case it just becomes part of the document, or de or, um, or deny the suggestion, and it will disappear. So here I will uh, I will say, no, I don't want to delete this, but we, why don't we add this other text? And then that just becomes part of it. So that's a handy way if you have a document that you want to retain some control over, but you want to have a lot of other people commenting on. 
thank you for watching this. This has been Kedding with LS Centap. If you're interested, you can go to our YouTube channel and see all of these videos plus much more. This is part of the Docs set, which includes docs, sheets, slides, and fusion tables at this moment. Hopefully, there'll be more in the future. Thank you so much, and have a good day.